I mean, even if they only did one room, even if they only did one room right. together with things that they already own and love in the home, if they could empty a room and say, let's bring into this room some things from elsewhere in the house that we love, make that we have chosen, room. and make it our room. Mm. And then when they need to discuss things, they go into that room to discuss them. I reckon they'd make more progress. That's a beautiful idea. I agree. We need to create space for conversations. And yeah. you can, of course, come to professionals like here, this space. I tried to make it as inviting as I could. But also you can have that space in your home, and I think you mm. probably should. Mm. All couples should have a space where they can sit down and mm. calmly, in an understanding manner, listen to each other and talk. Mm. Welcome to Real Relationships, a real and honest podcast about the inside world of working with close relationships. I'm Alona Serpentine, a couples therapist, a sex therapist, and a relationship educator. Here, I draw the curtain on how close relationships work, interview other relationship professionals, share behind-the-scenes stories from my own practice, and also invite couples, families, and individuals of all kinds to speak about their journey and their real relationships. We as humans cannot live without others. This is why I hope that by sharing the stories and reality-tested information from real professionals and real clients, more people will enjoy fulfilling, supporting, and successful relationships. If you want to have one of those or make your existing ones even better, and I can't imagine you are not, tune in to our episodes released twice a month on Thursdays. And to stay up to date with what we have to share, subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform or join our Facebook group, Real Relationships. Stay tuned and stay real. I would like to start by just, first of all, welcoming Sandy, Sandy Willihan from Color Magic Interior Design to our Real Relationships podcast. It's been a couple of weeks since I've interviewed someone. My last episode was a solo episode, so I think I'm a little bit out of touch. I've been knowing Sandy now for quite a few years, actually. Mm -hmm. And just before coming to this interview, Sandy was probably already thinking that I moved elsewhere because mm -hmm. struggling to find us. But no, I'm still here at our Alice Place couples practice and we're actually sitting on a yellow couch that comes from Sandy. And Sandy is sitting here right next to me, very spring-colored coordinated together with the couch, which is really lovely. So welcome, Sandy. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So I was sharing with Sandy that the whole point of this podcast is to, I guess, see how professionals, various professionals from family lawyers to spa therapists, see working with relationships and what they bring to the relationships. Because Ultimately, relationships are everywhere, and often we don't even consider that a specific business or specific profession also touches on the relationships. And when I looked for people who would be good to interview for this podcast, I came across Sandy's name, and I said, like, of course. Sandy goes into people's homes, tries to help them to have a better home environment, and would be a perfect guest for the next podcast. Great. So, Sandy, like always with all my guests, I just ask you just to tell us the story of how you became an interior designer. Well, I've been in business now for, I think this is my 21st year, and I started just because I think all my life I've had a passion in design, colour, shape and form. I did an interior design course with Deakin University when my youngest was, actually before she was born, I started, and I just found I was just absolutely so besotted with this subject. And 21 years later, I find I'm exactly the same. I've just been to um, start off a new renovation over in Pakenham this morning, and I am just as excited now as I always was when I started, which is very lucky after all these years to still be passionate about what I'm doing. That's very, I feel very privileged. And I feel very privileged actually to help people. When, often when I'm called into a home, like I, I did one yesterday for a, a family with four children, and they'd never had a space that really worked for them. It was a space that they'd, they'd inherited when they bought the house. The babies then came along and turned into children, and they've never had the money or the time to be able to make it beautiful to make it theirs. And so I really feel that it's a privilege to be asked to do this work and to help people. 
because I know how much difference it makes for families and for couples or even individuals to be able to live in a home that is theirs. It's almost like a, you feel almost like a koala squeezing a bum into your own tree. It's a space that represents your own personality. And that's really huge. And I can see how this would really make a couple of people in a relationship if they had some individual aspects that they had chosen for the home that bring it together, it's actually almost cementing them as a couple, as well as bringing the home elements together and making it all work aesthetically. And that's how I see it. And that sometimes, in fact, most times it'll be just the wife that's helped, that's asking for my help. But if I can get the husband to be there as well, it makes it a little bit trickier for me in so much as I'm taking into consideration two people's ideas. But where the husband is really interested in interior design, I want him there mm. because I want to know that what we cho choose is representing his thoughts as well. And if it makes it a little bit tricky, well, so be it. It just means we work around it. So what I'm hearing, well, first of all, your passion is so clear. I can actually feel it here and the voice it says becomes so vibrant and so energized when you talk about helping families, couples with their home environment. But I'm also thinking immediately, you really have to understand the people you work with. Yes. And through understanding them and to getting what gets them and what they get, like what what is it those personalities they have, you actually not only helping them to have a better environment, but you're also kind of merging them together in one home. Let's say if it's a couple, you're bringing the personality of mm. one partner and the other partner, and you kind of make it real. Yeah. It's like putting together a puzzle. That's what comes to my mind. It's exactly right. You're exactly right. Because by enhancing the home, I feel anyway, they are, to me, without doubt, enhancing their lives. Because it's a place where they feel secure and safe. And that's what a home should be. Sometimes I mean I have a whole book of what I call the sexy front door colors. Nice. Yeah. What are the sexy fabulous? Front yes. Ah, oh, oh, really vibrant colors. And when red, you, yellow. Oh, absolutely. Yellow, greens, blues, purples. Oh. And I've I've used loads of them on, and they, and they, they all laugh when I say I've got I've got a whole folder of sexy front doors. Yes. Because I just think that when you come home from a hard day, you might be on the road, you might have difficult clients, you might just be really taxing your brain or stretching it beyond its natural elasticity and you're finding life a little bit hard. When you park your car and you walk up the driveway, you need to have a front door that says, Thank Thank God, home. I'm home, I'm safe. Mm -hmm. The world can continue without me. I'm just going to step inside this front door and I'm where I belong. And then you've got furniture around you and there may be old photos, there may be lovely things that have come from past relatives or so on, and they all contribute to us feeling safe and at home. It's really important. Our environment is very important to our well-being. And so that's why I love what I do, because when I get involved with the families or the couples or sometimes individuals, I know that I'm allowing them to express their personalities in their space. And it also sounds like it's way more than just function just more than, okay, we need a table to eat at or we need a couch to sit on. It's much more creating an ambience, creating a certain atmosphere and a feeling, whatever that family needs at that stage of life. Yeah, absolutely. I think the people who see their home as purely functional would not get me in to help them. Right. Those that contact me is because, firstly, they know that they want more than they've got and, secondly, they know they can't do it without help. And so it's such a positive, seriously positive work for me to do because rewarding, I, I it's see. really rewarding, really rewarding. I mean, I've had couples that have given me bottles of wine and bunch, bunches of flowers and all sorts. So grateful. Just, just so grateful, so grateful because they pick up on my passion and I get them excited. There are some funny stories, of course. Please. No one stays in business for 21 years without <laughs> having some lovely stories. But one that, one that jumps into my mind was one time I was called in, I think, by the wife. And uh, I could hear by on the, on the phone that she had a, an older voice. And when I turned up, I reckon they must have been in their early 80s. 
And I think they'd almost at the point where they'd stop speaking. <laughs> they showed because me this they wall. were fighting over. They, were, they could not agree on the wall colours for their home. And they had each gone to Bunnings and there must have been, I would say, maybe about 30 swatches. So they'd kept going back to Bunnings and tried. And each of them was trying to persuade me to choose their colour yeah. and not the other one's colour. And because I've got 4,500 colours, so I paid no attention and oh, I just no. got the right colour. They went with the flooring and the light that comes in, the orientation on the land, the furniture they had, and all of those things that I take into consideration. So I got a colour and they were both in love with it, which was exactly what I wanted. So can but you tell me what colour it was? Oh, I can't remember. It was a lot of years ago, but... It was lovely because honestly, they for the first time probably in a while, they were on the first on the same page when it came to how their home would progress and move on because the the colour of the walls is one thing and then from there you get the colour of the furniture, the colour of the floors and so on, if they things are changing. So it was just um an interesting exercise. And I've always, I mean, I would reckon it would be at least 10 years ago, wow. but it still sticks in my mind as a, a funny example. Well, it's interesting. I'm just going to link it to the work that I do. As therapists, finding common ground is everything. Yeah. As soon as we find common ground, suddenly the couple or the family, they feel united. You've got they, something to work with. Exactly. Yes. And they feel, okay, we are in the same boat. Let's sail it together. Yeah, yeah. And it can be, as you say, the same wall color. We suddenly agree on this, which mm. means we can probably agree on bigger things in life too. Yeah. 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 Well, it's I can very see important. That. I can yeah. see that. So I guess maybe for our listeners, those who maybe have never spoken to an interior designer, and I must say, I am a person who probably first met an interior designer in my 30s. So what does an interior designer actually do? Well, we probably all work a bit, little bit differently, but the way I work personally is that I'm very, I wouldn't do this any other way. To me, there is no other way of doing it. I take my clients on a journey with me. I don't obviously put my arm around them, but in my mind, that's what I'm doing. It's like we walk this track together. And so I don't tell them what they should have. I listen. I ask questions. I listen. I look at what they've already got. I look at colors that they like, things that they've chosen, cushions or what they're wearing or lampshades or something that, so if if they're really bright, then I think, okay, these people are wanting some vibrancy. And then a lot of the time it's, they're much more neutered. So I think I wouldn't expect them to be interested in brighter colors. But basically I go in, it's a black sheet. I speak to the, the owners. If I've got however many there are, sometimes if they're children, I'll speak to them too mm. and ask if I'm decorating their rooms. I want to know their thoughts. Yeah. I want to know what they love. And I take my inspiration from what's already in the room. And, and then we talk through what's needed. Sometimes it's flooring, lighting, furniture, obviously wall colors, sometimes inside and out. Sometimes it's just accessories. It's whatever they need. I mean, I've got three different packages, two hours, up to two hours, up to four, up to six hours. Depends. The one I did yesterday was an entire house. So we did loads, loads of stuff. Very time consuming. It is really time consuming. And then I I left them with a, um, a five page report so that if it takes them a year to get through everything that they want to do, well, they've got it all written down. It's all been designed at the same time by the same people in the same mood, in the same season so that everything flows. And in that report, what's in it? Basically, it's a result of our discussions. So I just write down everything we've discussed and where I'm bringing in different trades that I'm suggesting, I'll put their details, what they're good at, what I'm suggesting that they will do. I'll then contact the trades myself and send them emails and say, this is the client. These are the circumstances. This is what we've discussed and this is what I need your help with. Can you please arrange, ring this client up, arrange to go and make a free, do a free quotation. So it's not only designing based on the needs and whatever those people might want to see in their homes, but it's then also coordinating the steps to making it all happen. Bringing all the trades in. And through me, many of my trades give my clients 10% discount, which is fabulous because all they need is a couple of, I think there's about 10 vouchers in the pouch that I give them. Even if they only just use a couple of them, it more than makes up for my services, the cost of my services. And then they're getting also professionals that I have used, tried and trusted, many of them for many years that I've been working with these these trades. So I feel very comfortable recommending these trades because I know that they will look after my clients. And that's and, really and important. they will deliver the designs. Absolutely. 
the results based on your design. Would you visualize the design? Do they actually see what it will look like or how do they know what they will be getting? We walk through it. We will walk through it. Sometimes we'll map things out on the floor if they're extending a space, but mostly it's just visualize. It's me talking them through and we get, you know, and we get in there and we will move furniture around and this sort of stuff. And that's one of the things sometimes people just want me to go in and rearrange what they've already got. Or sometimes it's a matter of getting a house ready for sale. If it's an empty house, then I get a staging company in that I work very closely with. Or if it's using their own furniture, a lot of the time it's actually taking some of the stuff out because Mm -hmm. how we stage is not how we live. We represent our homes with enough space, physical space, but also emotional space so that any homeowner, potential buyer coming through can see the home, imagine their own family in it. Whereas if it's quite cluttered or if it's got lots and lots of family photos of the family that are currently living in it, that kind of detracts from them, you know, the the potential buyers being able to make that visualization. That you would pro a pro tip you probably would share with clients who would like to stage their house for sale is to remove the personal items as much as possible. Exactly. Is it because you think it's it feels foreign to them, like somebody else lives there. That's why they can't associate themselves with that. It's getting the balance right because if it's a family home and you've got children and you're selling this home, you obviously want to be attracting families with children. So having a few bits and pieces in the, of, of you know, your children's life in the corner, well, that obviously is giving the impression this is a children friendly home. But at the same time, if you have too much, then it's just too much clutter for a potential buyer to see past. Mm. And I've been in homes when I've been looking for homes myself, and sometimes there's hardly any floor space, and you go, I can't even see if my own furniture would fit in here. So it's a matter of getting the balance right. You don't want to be emptying everything and all the character out, all the personality, but you don't want it to be so overwhelming that someone coming through can't use their own visualization to be able to imagine their own families in that space. And a lot of it's just decluttering. I mean, we all gather you know, items as we go through life. That is just normal. But when you're putting your home on the market for sale, you need to make your home look as spacious as possible. That's the aim of the game too, because that's what people are buying. They're buying space. space. They're buying space. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because what you are saying, Sandy, is that you don't only help families and couples support the life that they want to have together, but you may also enter couples and families at a certain stage of transition. When let's say they transition to a bigger home when they have more children or maybe empty nesters Mm -hmm. who transition to a smaller home or even inevitably, like always in life, a relationship that falls apart and then they have to sell the house and move separate ways. Mm -hmm. So if we now focus specifically on working with families and relationships, going through all those different parts of the life stages, what do you find most important in in your professional capacity? What is important for you when you think, okay, I'm meeting this family, I'm meeting this relationship. What do you want to start with? So you're asking if it were a family who are staying in the home? It doesn't matter. Just so you, you are just going in a new family and you know you're going to meet the owners. What is really important for you to start? Well, firstly, I have to say I still, after all these years, Mm -hmm. find when I walk up the pathway to a front door that is going to be opened by a person, I still find that I have just a very lovely, warm, fuzzy kind of butterfly feeling in my stomach. I always get it. And I just, when I'm walking, I kind of acknowledge it. I clock it and I go, oh, there you are again. And I get excited about going. I get excited. I know the door is going to be opened by a person, but honestly, it's the house that I'm going to see because the house tells me the areas that it needs help with, the areas that are a little bit too dark. A little bit about the person. Very much about the people that are living in it. Very much about that. And sometimes I can pick up if there's sadness in the house. I can just feel it just Mm. from... I, you know, I remember doing a job for uh, uh, a lovely man. I was actually staging his home and uh, he actually left while we were doing it. I had my whole team and then they came and he, he came back once we'd finished and he burst into tears. 
and he told me that his little girl had died oh, in no. that in that home and he he and his wife has had consequently split up and they were moving on wow. and he was just so full of pain and it was a bittersweet it chokes me up a little bit now to you because it was oh. it was it was it was lovely he was crying because he was happy because he could see that there was an end to this pain and he could see there was a, he was coming through the tunnel and he was there was going to be light at the end of it so he could see a future and that's why he was upset but also he was sad because he told me the story so you know it was you just have to be a bit of a therapist as well yeah i do really because of, when i'm entering into family homes and homes of couples then they are quite kind of intimate with me because they want as much help as I can give them. So they give me as much as they can to help, yeah. give me the opportunity to help them. They welcome you in their mm. most private circle, into their intimate circle. Absolutely. The home, as you said at the beginning, is basically a reflection of who we are. It is. Wow. It is. And I see it as a privilege. When I write to them afterwards and I send them the report, that's always the first couple of lines in my in my uh, email. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm into your home and help you make these decisions. And I do see it as a privilege. I'm very honoured, really, because sometimes, it, it, as with this gentleman, it was a painful thing for him to do. And sometimes it's just a bit confronting because for people who have always lived in a home and they know they don't like it, but they don't know how to change it, and they for well, they know they need my help, but still they are opening themselves up. And I've had people say to me, oh, you, you're so friendly. You're, you know, it's been a lovely experience. And I've kind of laughed and thought, did you expect anything? Oh, well, we've heard that some interior designers are quite fierce. No. Well, I'm definitely not fierce. No, you are listening <laughs> and you understand. Absolutely, absolutely. And I take it seriously. I mean, we have a laugh along the way mostly, but it is, it's a, it's a, for some people, for actually quite a lot of people, it might be the first time that they have ever tried to coordinate past furniture, maybe new furniture that's coming in and bringing in carpets and lighting. It's, there's quite a bit of money involved. So it is kind of a little bit of an anxious time for them. So to, It can be quite stressful. It can. So they it need can. a person who is actually sensitive yes. to that stress and to yes. the tension that it creates. Yes. And as a therapist, straight away I'm thinking always different perspectives. Do you find mm -hmm. that your families and couples tend to share more their vision of the home or do they tend to be very different? They're often quite different. They are often quite different. I mean, particularly if you've got a mum at home who's looking after young children, she's spending a lot of time in the home. And often you find that it can be the other way around. Of course, you have house husbands, but you'll find that the other person who's going out into the world is just living in a much more kind of clinical environment. Pragmatic. Very, very pragmatic. And 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 it's um and then they come home and, and it, there's a period, I suppose, because I know my I've got three children of my own and a husband and and there's a period of time when those two worlds have to meld together, you know? And if it's a beautiful environment, that's a much easier space wow. for the one that's been at home to say, sit down, I've put the kettle on and let's have a chat and debrief. How was your day? And it's really important to do that in a space that has been chosen and designed, if where possible, by both people. It's That's really, really collective ideas and visualizations that can come together there so that there may be a favorite chair of the one that works outside the home. And that's his chair when he comes home or her chair when they come home and sit down and have that cuppa. And, and they feel welcome and they Absolutely. feel like, okay, this is a place where I belong. Somebody has been waiting for me yeah. and they have left the chair for me. Yeah. Wow. It's a small thing, but it's actually a big, has a big it's impact. Big it's quite significant. It's huge. It's huge because it clearly tells the other person you're welcome here. We're waiting for you. Yeah. This is yours. This is yours and you're important. You are. And don't we all want to be told that? Absolutely. Wow. I'm listening to you, Sandy, and my mind is just like, I'm so in love with what you're sharing because very often we talk to couples about the importance of the environment. Mm -hmm. Like a small thing that we say, like if you constantly have conflicts with each other, if you fight, if you step onto each other's toes, 
it's really important to find the space where you have your conversations in a productive manner rather than having them wherever it takes place. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you step away from the bedroom, which is supposed to be comforting, a safe space, and maybe go outside and have your argument there, suddenly your whole mind changes Mm -hmm. because you know, okay, this is where I need to talk rather than just say whatever I want to say without considering what happens with my partner. Mm -hmm. So we often encourage them to change the environment where they do things. And when that happens, we see instant results Mm -hmm. because the environment sends us covert messages about what's happening here. And when we step out of that environment, we can actually change those messages and the way we relate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. And as you say, like if you fight in a space that is just not welcoming or where you don't feel like it's yours, where you don't feel you're special, then of course you will have more arguments. You feel more stressed and why would you bother if this is not the space that welcomes me? Mm -hmm. But if I sit here on the couch and then next to me I see, I don't know, my favorite plant or I see a picture of both of us or our whole family, then immediately my mind says, okay, you know, Maybe you need to be a bit more careful here because this is a welcoming space. Mm -hmm. I would maybe even go maybe a little bit too much out on a limb, but I would be even prepared to say it would be way less difficult to be able to argue in a space where you have created that space and it is together and it is a warm, comforting and loving space. It's probably a lot harder to have that anger and angst in that area, in that space, because it's like everywhere you, where your eye is moving to, it has beautiful things around it that you have chosen for the purpose of creating comfort with that other person. So all those sensory messages that you're getting are positive, good feelings rather than anxiety ridden angst. So I would go. Why is that too can, far to say it would I, be actually difficult to argue that. in a space that that was Absolutely. comfortable and cozy and caringly put together by two people for the purposes of sharing love? Absolutely, Sandy. And I think it's a, I mean, it, it is a little bit of tongue in cheek that I'm saying that, but maybe all couples should try to renovate uh, before they start, <laughs> I don't know, saying goodbye to their relationship. I mean, that obviously is going to put them through a lot of stress probably anyway, but maybe that's one of the strategies to use. Look at the space around you and work with the environment that you live in, in addition to whatever is happening between the two of you. I mean, even if they only did one room, even if they only did one room together with things that they already own and love in the home, if they could empty a room, and say, let's bring into this room some things from elsewhere in the house that we love, that we have chosen, and make it our room. Mm. And then when they need to discuss things, they go into that room to discuss them. I reckon they'd make more progress. That's a beautiful idea. I agree. We need to create space for conversations. And you can, of course, come to professionals like here, this space. I tried to make it as inviting as I could. But also you can have that space in your home, and I think you Mm. probably should. All couples should have a space where they can sit down and calmly in an understanding manner, listen to each other and talk. Mm -hmm. So beautiful stuff, Sandy. I'm really grateful for what you're saying. What do you finding to be most rewarding when you work with families? Oh, gosh, there's so much. (laughs) There is so much. I can pick a few if I'm okay with doing that. Children's bedrooms. I love that. I love being able to. Is it the colors? It's the colors, but the way the room is is set up as well. Girls seem to be better than this, but I have come upon boys and older boys as well, you know, like late teens that have just wanted to break away from the blues that they've had all of their lives and they want mustards and they want Mm. terracottas and they want charcoal, you know, really gutsy colors because that's how they're feeling inside. I mean, the color comes out. It's really interesting. It's an expression. Color is an expression. And it can be an expression of who we are as a person, but it can also be an expression of how we're feeling. 
I've got something called synesthesia, which is a way of looking at things with colour. I won't bother going into it. But it still sounds very interesting. It is, it is interesting. But for instance, I used to have a doctor who I remember one time having a stomach ache and she was asking me what colour it was and I was able to explain it and she got me straight away. So she knew how I, she'd been with me. She'd been my doctor for we a while. We actually use similar techniques. Do you? Therapy. With colour? Yeah, we are to think of, a sh- of, a, of an object. Mm-hmm. something similar and maybe a square or a circle and mm-hmm. just tell us what color it is yes and that instantly already tells us or puts us on a path of what it's about yeah so we use that too yeah. very powerful colors and associations we make with colors they are so telling yeah yeah um obviously when i started this back in 2002 there was a lot of color I remember doing one house and the lady chose 41 colours in her house. Wow. She had skirting boards, she had ceiling roses, she had different rooms with different colours. She had made these amazing patchwork quilts and the house was just a lock up and she had a patchwork quilt in each bedroom and said, I want you to pick out some colours. So we did all these colours and I kept saying, will your husband be all right? Yes, yes, he'll be happy with anything. Wow. And then I went immediately from that to another. I don't usually do two jobs in one, one day, but just circumstances. I went immediately from that job to another the house where the lady wanted cream. It was 21 years ago, probably 20, something like that. And she wanted cream walls throughout, but she wanted them all to be exactly the same. So because the light was different in each yes, room and it had different furniture and it had different oh, wow. light colors coming in from outside, I had to change ever so slightly the color of the cream so that it was stronger and lighter in different rooms so that it was the same everywhere. But the other thing that I had all those years ago was feature walls. And I have always loved feature walls. They mm, died too. out and it oh, was still it become ve- very good and it became very bland and now feature walls are coming back. And the beauty of it is you can have one wall that's very easy to paint. I say to them, you know, on a Sunday morning, you and your husband could just change this in a couple of hours if you get fed up of it. So it's quite safe. And it does mean that you can then bring some color into even just a bedroom. It doesn't have to be everywhere in the house, just one room that you want to evoke more passion or more personality into that room. Then you can put some color onto one wall that can easily be changed and it means that all your yeah, then your bed bed linen, your cushions and so on, your all your soft furnishings can tone to that wall. And it's it's a great idea and they are starting to come back. So I'm very happy to say that. Yes. Yeah. So I'm hearing that you definitely love working with colour. I love working with colour. And yeah. how do you navigate it when the family doesn't agree? I don't leave them until they do. That's the bottom line. You wear them down. No, I just find a common ground. So it's not a matter of one person winning. It's about the family as a whole winning. So you really like that colour. You really don't. Well, let's get a tone of that colour that you can cope with so that everybody, there's always middle ground, always middle ground, as you know. And I have never in 21 years, and I can't imagine it ever happening, where I would actually walk away without the client being happy. Wow. Because the job's not finished until they're happy. So that's what I would say until it's done. And that means that we have to keep going over old ground because someone said, hang on a minute, I've changed my mind. I don't like that. Mm. Well, then we'll start again. And it's, just, it's quite an easy thing, really. It's not It's not something I find difficult. I probably should come to you for some more lessons, how to bring people <laughs> to common ground, because sometimes I struggle. Yeah. Because it's not um, it's not always easy to see that ground, and sometimes it's about something else, not necessarily the color. Maybe it's just like, well, you don't want to have a fireplace, and I do want to have a fireplace. Yeah. That's why I'm going to be difficult about the color. Yeah. So yeah. could be some very tricky conversations to have, but it sounds like you do it with ease. Well, it, I think it's made easy for me because I love it, and I I'm sure that my clients pick up on that. Because I, when I start talking about design, color, shape, form, furniture, etc., I have this silly grin that goes pretty much <laughs> what you're looking at now, and I can't, I so can't take it off. Smile. I can't. It just sits there. It's just, you know, it's just so, <laughs> it is, it is. So that's why I don't really come upon difficult clients all that often because they they, they get infected by your happiness, yeah. your positivity, and it's like okay, we we should be on our best behavior here with yeah. Sandy. Yeah, and I think because usually they've discussed before I arrive, they've actively invited 
invited me in. I have I don't do cold calling. Work. They've invited me in because they need the help. So they're quite excited about the whole thing mm-hmm. changing too. But I mean, it, it, it isn't uncommon for me to come upon a couple that don't agree on everything. So it's just a matter of, well, let's find out what we can what we can do with this. I mean, my work as opposed to your work is I've got tangible things to work with. <laughs> I can understand it'd be a lot more difficult for yourself. Yeah, especially yeah. if it's not always clear what's going on. Yes. But I'm sure there must be something that is a little bit challenging in your work when it, you come across couples and families. Oh, I'm on the spot. I honestly can't think of anything. I honestly can't think of anything. Well, yeah, maybe there is. There's a, um, a family that I helped not that long ago and both lovely, lovely people, but I think they were struggling a little bit between the two of them so that they needed you more than they needed me, to be perfectly honest. But I did help them with all sorts of things. But that's the only thing that sometimes I can pick up on, you know, things. But, you know, obviously that's not my role. It's to help them to to make their environment the best that it can be. And, you know, I just wish them the very best. Mm-hmm. But they were definitely happy, you know, by the time I left, they were happy mm-hmm. with everything that I'd, all the decisions that I'd made. So, you know, I just hope that it all works out for them. Obviously, not all couples make it. And that's that's the the sadness of it all, but I help any way I can. And I always say that, you know, I'm I'm here for you as much or as little as you need me. Mm. I don't overstep the mark. I ask them what they need my help with. I would never say, oh, well, we'll definitely get rid of that chair because they might go, well, we just bought that. (laughs) That would be a very bad idea. So I would just ask, what do you need my help with? And we'll work through that. And sometimes it evolves. Sometimes they get me in for one room and then they love what I suggest. So they go, well, actually, would you come and have a look at some other rooms? Yes, no problem at all. I feel, Cindy, you have so much knowledge of just how to how to put things together, how to use tangible objects, as you said, around you. And I'm sure it's not furniture only. I'm sure it's so many more things. So I guess if you could be generous to share some of your, I don't know, easy tips and tricks for couples and families that that can instantly change the environment in their room, what would you recommend? What can any couple or family do in their home to make it a little bit lighter, brighter, more comfortable? Without spending too much money? Maybe just a little bit. Well, a lot of the time, um, it's a matter of just changing accessories. And that can be a very inexpensive, you know, cushions, lamps, throws, a rug. And it doesn't have to be really expensive stuff. You know, Kmart is awesome. Kmart is awesome. (laughs) Honestly, I have taken a few clients to Kmart, you know, and all of a sudden you go, wow, I really like that lamp. I really like that rug. And all of a sudden it's changed. To change a sofa is usually a fairly expensive item. To change carpets to get a home painted if you're getting it done professionally. Whereas you can really change the feel of something, firstly, by decluttering, Decluttering. taking a lot of stuff out. And when you look, it's the art of looking at at least a room by room, looking at your home with clean eyes. And that's sometimes hard to do, but easier, for instance, when you've been on holiday and you come back and walk back in the home and you go, right, really look at it as though you've never seen this house before. And then you're likely to go, oh, well, that's that's a bit messy over there. Let's get rid of that. And that we, do we really need that chair? We have nobody sat in it for two years. Let's get rid of that. Put it on marketplace. Get rid of it. You know, and just just declutter. And then with, with the pieces that you've got left, make sure that they're pieces that you really love. You should be surrounded by things that you really love. They need to be functional. Of course, you've got to have dining table, uh, dining chairs to sit at your table. But to the best of your budget, make sure that you've got things that you love and then bring in some new accessories. If you've got a neutral sofa, neutral flooring and, and um, colors on the walls, you can make your room very muted and very calm and quiet space with soft blues, maybe some soft yellows or sage green. Or you can make it really vibrant and fantastic fun by bringing some orange or some some bright pink if there are going to be children using that room for a playroom of something. You know, and it's you've got active colours and you've got calm and relaxation colours. And I think most people kind of know the difference between them. And it's just a matter of getting 
getting each room to have a function in your home that you can use. And and the other thing that I'm really strong about is you've paid for every square inch of your home. You should be using it. And if you've got a spare bedroom and the child's moved out, well, make it into a little gym, make it into a sewing room, make it into a reading room, put a bookshelf in there and a nice lamp and a lovely, comfortable chair. Make it into a space and and stick a kettle on a little table, you know, so you don't even have to get up. So make it into a space that is going to extend your life and extend your the use of your home. It just makes perfect sense to me because, yeah, you've paid for every room. Wow. Very, very clear, easy to implement tips from Sandy. Yeah, and not expensive. This doesn't t- cost a lot of money. A lot of the time it's moving th- things around. You don't even need to purchase anything. Or if you do need to purchase stuff, just go and have a look and see what IKEA have got. Go and see what Kmart have got. Not expensive stuff. Not expensive stuff. And it can change a lot. Yeah. And it can even change maybe your whole relationship for the better and to the future of your children as yeah. well. Yeah. So I think I've now have a much better appreciation for the power that interior designers bring to relationships and to family lives. And I'm sure our listeners will do too. And I'm sure they've learned now way more than they knew before about interior design. But if for any chance somebody who is listening to us would love to get in touch with you because I think you are such an amazing person, not only professionally but also personally, where can they find you? Thank you. That's so nice to hear. You are. You are. (laughs) Absolutely, you are. Well, I've just revamped my website, I think, for the fifth time in my working life. So it's got a brand new website. I checked it out. Did you? This morning. And I must say, it looks really nice. Lovely. Clean, professional, lovely pictures. I thought, ooh, that looks good. Fantastic. Well, it's the uh, website is www.colormagic.com.au. Obviously spelt color correctly, not the American way. With With O-U. in it and just go and have a look at the pages in the interior design page you'll see all the the three packages that i've got it's i've made it as simple as possible as the silver gold and the platinum packages the prices are all there as i say there are vouchers 10 percent discount vouchers that go with all of these which render my services more than free if they use those there's also a whole page that's, that's um labeled blog. And that is just useful information Mm. for people who are renting, people who are uh, have investment homes, people are getting their their homes ready for sale. Just a whole load of useful information. They are actually from, I used to write for a magazine and I did that for quite a while. And they are simply articles that I put together and uh, and made them into a blog. And lots of photos, lots of ideas that people can just, you know, start to dream about. They're mostly soft furnishings that make a harsh life a bit softer. That's really what I think about a home. It should be a place where we can escape to and just be comforted and safe. Wow, what a great quote to end with, Sandy. Thank you so much. And I look forward to having you again. Thank you. I've loved it. Thank you. And that's a wrap. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Real Relationships Podcast. For more reality tested relationship information, visit our Facebook group, Real Relationships. Or if you have a question or a guest suggestion for me to interview next, email me at podcast at Stay tuned and stay real.